Hey, it's Rose from the Painted Toad, and I'm here tonight to show you how to paint fireworks at dusk. So if you're joining me, say hi, let me know you're here, and we're going to jump right in and get started on the painting. And we're going to put a little paint on here. You don't really need a lot. I'm working on a 5x7, so we don't need a ton of paint. I'm going to take a flat brush and I'm going to start painting and we're going to paint the whole canvas black. Now you could use a black canvas. They sell them in black. Um, I don't, honestly, I'll be honest, I don't know if they sell them in a 5x7 size, but you can find a canvas, um, black canvas in other sizes and I've used them for different paintings, but they do cost a little bit more, so sometimes it's just easier to just paint the canvas black. I guess you have to decide whether or not you want to use the paint to do it, or if you want to, you know, spend a little extra and have it already done for you. It kind of saves this extra step here. Let me move that out of my way. I'm going to dry this really quick. That is the one nice advantage about, you know, if you have a black canvas, you won't have to dry it because it'll already be black. But I'm going to dry this really quick. And then we're going to get to work on the different colors. I think that's pretty dry. You can still see a couple spots here, but they'll dry relatively quickly. And I'm going to come in now and use some yellow and whites. And we're going to add just maybe a little cityscape along this. So we're gonna have the sky up here and we're gonna have some water down here. And in the water, we're gonna reflect the, um, ugh, what am I trying to say? We're going to reflect the fireworks. There we go, that's what I wanna say. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another flat brush. Now, if you only have one, just wash the one you have. Um, if you have several like I do, you can just switch to a brand new brush. And I'm just looking here. I want to get one that's a little bit bigger, but not too big. So maybe this, this one should work okay. And um, I'm going to figure out kind of where I want my horizon line here. Because some of these colors that I'm going to do down in here, um, without adding this little masking layer here, um, they might not show up. So I'm going to go sideways and kind of just brush some white along here. And I kind of did the halfway down here. I could go, you know what, I'm going to go a little bit farther down with this because, changing my mind here, I want to have lots of room for my fireworks up here, so I'm going to bring this down a little. And don't worry about this. That will fix that. <laughs> I'm not worried. So I'm going to bring this down here. And then while I'm at it, let me just fix that little spot in case it's bothering you. It's not really bothering me. I just don't want to confuse anybody with our skyline here. Okay. So I'm going to paint right over the top of this here. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to bring that down just a tad. So not quite, like a little bit more than halfway, maybe a third. Is that a third? No, a little bit more than a third, I guess. Just leave lots of room up here for your fireworks. Um, okay, so coming along, I'm going to add a little bit more here. And I'm using the, the skinny edge of this brush. Just kind of going back and forth, back and forth. Bring it up here to my horizon line. And the reason why I'm doing this is because some of the colors that we're going to do on here are very light, like yellow and light green. And if I do that right over, whoops, I just dipped it in black. If I do that right over the black, um, it's going to look 
a little bit too transparent and I really want to get some color down here. So that is why I'm lightening this up just a tad. And you might be like, well, why did you just paint it black? Because trust me, there is a process and a plan. So just, you gotta trust me. <laughs> and sometimes I don't really, I don't know what my plans are. Sometimes I do kind of make it up as I go. There. Okay. So I've got all this here. Let's add a little bit more white so this is nicely covered. And, and I'm not really making this smooth. I want kind of, I want these jagged edges. So that's why I'm using the edge of my brush. If you're wondering why I'm not, you know, going back and forth like this for nice smooth edges, because I don't want a smooth edge. I want these little jagged edges. That's, that's what I'm trying to do on purpose. There. Okay. Now that that's done, I'm going to do a little bit of detail work already. We're going to get into the details. Um, so I want my little city skyline along the bottom here. And city lights, they might be white. They might be yellow. I'm going to get some yellow. Um, I might do some, oh, maybe some red or something like that. We'll get a couple different bright colors. We got primary colors and white. It's basically what I have here. And then I'm going to take um, one of my smaller brushes here. Now I had a liner brush all ready to go. And now I got to find it. Here we go. This should be okay. I just got it a little bit wet just to kind of smooth out the point here. And along the bottom, I'm just going to create some little, little lights and buildings and things. So maybe there's some little buildings down here. And there's no fancy thing here. These are just so small. It's just to give the impression that there is a city here along the edge of the water. You can use your imagination a little bit if you want to, you know, maybe there's a little pier along here and then there's little lights all along the pier. Kind of, I'm going to stay away from this area. It's still a little wet. I'll come over there later. So I did some white. I'm going to go in and add some more colors. Add some yellow. You, know, you could do some as dots, some as little stripes or lines. There's yellow. Now I can do, I'll do maybe a couple red. There's not a lot of people, not a lot of red lights in a city. So maybe just a couple of these will do red. Red doesn't really show up either on the black. So 
just for some variations of color. I don't know, what do you think? Do you think that looks like a city twinkling there on the edge of the water? I think it's gonna look cool. Let me add some blue. So maybe up here, there's like kind of a tall building that has some blue. So for fireworks this year, I don't know if we're going to go see a show or not. Um, we haven't really talked about it yet. There's usually a really good one at our local Metro Park sometime in the end of June. So we used to have this awesome setup where we would, where we would go, um, and then we had this grassy hill. So everybody else would go and sit down on the beach with their blankets and it's like crazy and there's people everywhere. So we've always been rather antisocial when it comes to major events. But we have this great little spot. It's back in the parking lot. You can sit on the hill and see all the fireworks just fine. Um, and so every year we kind of, we would go there and um, we would do that. We would find our little spot in the hill. We watch the fireworks shows, and then we were up and in the car before anybody else was able to get back from the beach. So we'd be like the first ones in line, which you know usually worked pretty good, except for one year we had one of the babies. I think maybe it was, I think maybe it was baby Juliet. I can't remember, but one of our babies. They were just little somebody had a poopy diaper so it was like we had to change it because it smelled so bad <laughs> so we had to change the diaper and then and then we were stuck in traffic for hours oh my gosh it was horrible and you know my kids were getting tired and crabby and just crying and fuss well one kid in particular but i won't say who that was anyways um it just was it was a long, long wait and then a long drive home. So it was kind of a funny, funny firework memory. Now all my girls are old enough that uh, I don't think we'd have to deal with that. My youngest daughter is seven now. So, so I'm just taking, I have a liner brush here and I am just kind of creating these stretch out little dashes for sparks in a radial pattern so i'm going around in a circle so it's kind of like a flower here's the center and then i want to let all these little fireworks kind of come out of the center and you know burst open in the sky here so they're kind of bursting like so this is um a very small detail painting because the little fireworks you know if you go too thick well they could be thick fireworks too i'm barely touching the canvas here so if you're wondering how am i getting those ultra fine lines i'm just being very gentle and not uh, well that one's too fat but that's fine that's just like a little extra starburst you know spark it kind of spread and then maybe some of these are going to curve down a little bit because gravity is already pulling them. So you can always do a couple that are kind of getting pulled down by gravity. The sparks are coming down. And if you're not real confident with a, a liner brush like this, you could. Um, you could do something like this with maybe with paint pens, but I feel like the, the brush is you know a lot easier to get these wispy spark like looks so i'm kind of i'm liking how this brush is working out pretty good here 
Another option you can do, and I think I put on the list, you can use a wooden skewer to get your dots. So if you want to do more of um, kind of like a, a dot design, you could do that. Let's throw a couple wild ones over here. So I've got my yellow one there. This is almost dry and then I can add some more city lights over here on this dark side. And then next to yellow, I'm going to go in and I'm going to do some orange. So let me pull out my orange here. And I learned some interesting things. I've been doing a firework class for kids. It's called Fantastic Fireworks. It's on Out School. And we do um, salt painting fireworks. So you do salt and glue and then you paint them with watercolors. It's kind of a fun thing. But in part of the class, I have information that I found on how they're made, like how they make the colors and stuff. And it's actually quite interesting. It's all just chemical reactions. And, um, you know, they're, they're burning different chemicals, basically setting them on fire and they will turn a certain color. So for example, the white firework is actually sodium, like table salt, which is kind of cool. So the salt you use on your table, if you set it on fire and had it explode, which I don't recommend, um, you would get white sparks. And then, you know, the other colors are different, um, different chemicals different elements that they that they burn. So I know I'm trying to remember all of them. Blue is actually um, calcium. So they take calcium and that makes blue. And in the little video it says they used to use arsenic, which that makes a really great blue, but you really don't want to fill the air with arsenic because that would be bad because it's poisonous. So now they use calcium. This is kind of an interesting little firework fact, how they build these or make these. It'd be kind of cool to be a firework scientist, I think. So if you're joining me, it's Rose from the Painted Toad and we're painting fireworks at dusk. And what is your favorite firework? So they actually have names. Most of them are named after different things. So, um, there's like the, a lot of them are like natural things. So like chrysanthemum is one. There's a willow. There's, um, oh, I'm trying to think. There's jellyfish. Like they have all these funky names. You can look them up. There's actual names for the different shapes. I've always loved like the willow where it just kind of sparkles and then it just kind of lasts long and it, it has like a trickling trail of sparks coming down. I just always think those are cool. Or the little ones that spin and um, squeal. Like they have little spinners and they kind of squeal as they're coming down. Those are another one of my favorites. So what's your favorite fireworks? Which ones do you like? Or what's your favorite color firework? Have you ever given that some thought? I do like the white with a sparkle. It just looks like magic raining down from the sky. Blue is always pretty too. I like a blue firework. I think blue, they saw that's one of the harder colors to make. And it's interesting too that they can formulate it in such a way that it explodes to create a certain shape. Like there's got to be a lot of engineering and science that goes into you know, making those fireworks explode the way you want to. It's kind of cool to think about. But we usually do, yeah, we usually either go to the Metro Park or in and around the 4th of July. There's another show in one of our local towns. They have a big tournament, pickerel tournament. And, um, they have them along the river, so it's always packed.
It's going to bring some of these sparks down. So these are looking kind of fun. Like I said, lots of detail work on here. Um, this is finally dry, so I'm going to add just a couple little colors over here just to extend my cityscape. So we've got a little bit of light going on over on this side of town. We'll put some, maybe a couple tall buildings over here. And a little yellow, just adding some color. Do, do, do. Maybe a little blue. And some red. I don't even bother cleaning my brush for those because it's so small. It's not even really going to show up too much. Okay, continuing on, we're going to switch colors now and get some red. Now this red one, I'm going to put it right on top a little bit of this orange one. So it's going to cross over. So you don't want to keep all your fireworks separate because that's not what they do. When they do fireworks, they're kind of all bursting all in front of each other, around each other. It's like the grand finale. Everything's kind of exploding at the same time. So I'm going to have this red one kind of exploding here. You can have some of those kind of go off the edge here. If it crosses or mixes with a little bit of that orange paint because it's so wet, that's okay. No big deal. Red and orange work out just nicely together. Okay. I'm thinking that looks cool. Okay. I'm going to clean my brush. So I'm going to add, I'm going to start going into my cool colors over here. So we're going to get a little green over here. And I don't want the uh, red to get mixed in with the green because then I'm going to end up with a brown brown firework which I don't want. All right, let's see. I need some green. I'm just using regular shades of color. There's not really any fancy names here. Just your primary basic colors. Here we go. Like the cadmium varieties if you're using um, the paints that I'm using. So it's like a cadmium green. It's real bright. I'm going to take and lighten this up just a tad. Well, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to dip my brush in the green and then a little bit in the white to get a little green and white. Now, I could mix these two, but I'm just loading them both on the brush. And I'm going to work out a firework over here. I'm going to bring this one a little higher. Oh, I like that. It kind of makes a nice light green here. Always start with your little circular pattern and that'll kind of help you keep that radial pattern going around and around.
just going to let this one kind of crisscross over. Don't be afraid to let them crisscross over. And the other thing is, think about the size of these as well. You know, they might be bursting at different times. So some of them might be larger, some of them might be smaller. You can kind of decide what you want. And just to remind anybody who's coming in right now, I'm using a liner brush here. It's just a very skinny liner brush. And I'm barely, barely touching, just very gently wisping the brush across the canvas here. So it's hardly touching at all. We'll have a little bit burst out this way. So far, I think they're looking pretty cool. And I do kind of like the variety of color. I may actually do this with my other ones. I was going to do white over some of these other ones to add some bright spots, but I kind of like how when I'm putting both colors on the brush here, the white and the green, it's getting kind of a cool mix here of colors. So I like that. So there's a big bright green one. Just gonna swoop some more of these over here. Make sure it's nice and round. Looking good. Okay. Now to do the blue. So the blue, um, I do kind of like this brighter blue. I think I'll just use that. I'm going to try the same thing where I do some blue and some white. So I'm going to do some blue and white here and we'll see. Ooh, that's a lot of blue. And once again, if that blue mixes a little bit with the green that's already there, that's okay. Blue and green make a nice combo color. So it might turn a little teal. That's all right. We can have a mixture of colors here. I feel like I should have like the William Tell Overture playing or something to go along with this firework display. And last but not least, I'm going to do a little bit of purple. So I've got a brighter purple. We'll see how it turns out on here. Sometimes purple can be a little bit fickle about how it wants to show up. I'm just going to use violet. Just need a little drop of it. Don't need very much at all. We're going to use all these colors too down in the bottom. So 
I'm going to dip in the white again like I was doing before. And I'm going to add just a little, we'll add a little purpley spark one up here. Now really, when you do this painting, you could put these um, colors wherever you want. So you can make any shape you want with the fireworks. You know, do a little research, look up the different firework shapes, and you can really have fun with making one of these. This one's looking more white than purple. I'll probably get a little more purple on my brush here in a second. I'll just spread this out. Do, do, do. Yeah, the purple doesn't really want to show up without the white. I want to keep adding a little bit of white here and there just to get that purple to stand out from the black a bit. There. I think that's okay. All right, next I'm going to take some white and I'm going to add a few white spots on here to brighten this up. So I'm going to add a little bit of white over here, maybe down here and add a white firework. I'm just putting them right on top of the ones we have. Like I said, this is the grand finale. So there's a little white bursting one there and I'm going to do a little white kind of coming out the center of this orange one. I'm going to dip in the orange and the white kind of like I did with the other colors just to brighten up the centers a little bit. Give it a little bit more light, some luminescence. Same with the red. I'm going to dip in the red and the white and add a little bit lighter to my center. It might turn a bit pinkish. That's okay. We just want something a little brighter to get that red to stand out. Make it a little pinky. Just a tad.
I can hear upstairs. My daughter has her first friend over in like a year. We were very cautious over the pandemic. My daughters did online school. And so she's finally vaccinated and she's got a friend over. Her sisters are at friends' houses. Two of them are at grandma's house. And she has a friend all to herself. And all I can hear up there is giggling. <laughs> Lots and lots of giggles. So I'm going to take that as a good sign that they're having a good time. There. I'm going to add a little bit more of the whites to my other fireworks here. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to dip, like, I keep dipping the color and then I dip it in the white. That seems to be working really well for getting this really cool firework look where it's got some sparks colors in it some sparky colors just kind of creates some brightness to it what might be cool for one of these is if you have metallic paint that might be fun to paint this with metallic paint and then it'll have a little bit of shimmer or alternately you could go and add a little glitter on there you know, you could do um, a little layer of, I like to use glitter glue as opposed to sprinkling glitter on there just because, you know, if you do glitter, it's a mess. But glitter glue, it's contained in the glue, so it can't make as much of a mess. Almost done with my fireworks. If you take a look here, which one needs a little bit more white? It's the green one. Okay, let's go in and just lighten up a couple areas of the green one. So we got more of that spark effect. Sparky. Another thing my daughter did is made a cheesecake. So that'll be a yummy. Well, it probably won't be ready till tomorrow because it takes a while for a cheesecake to set. I think she might have forgot about that. She wanted to make a cheesecake. She's like, we don't have anything good to eat. I need to make something delicious for my friend so that we don't have boring food. I'm like, okay, what do you want to make? She's like, I want to make a cheesecake. I'm like, okay. But she does make phenomenal cheesecakes. My daughter is quite the baker. Okay, I'm loving it. I don't know what you think of it, but I like it a lot. I'm thinking it's looking pretty cool. So now I want to get down here and um, do something with the colors. And I'm going to use a flat brush again. And I'm going to start, well, I'll start with red. I was going to start in the middle with yellow, but we'll just start with this color and work our way across. So I'm just going to bring this across. And I'm going on an angle here. And I am going over the black and the white. So the white was because I wanted a real bright red over here. I wanted that to look real red. If you notice the black, we can't see as much of the red. So we're getting a little bit of both here. And I did that on purpose, I'm trying to get the colors to blend a little bit here. And then I'm just kind of sweeping my brush back and forth on the edge. Just like that. Get that to my canvas here real quick. So I've got some red here. I might do that a little bit thicker. Just put a little more thickness on there and then I'll get some texture. I love texture so I'm always going in here adding 
could use a palette knife on this, but I didn't put palette knife on the list. So we're just going to do it with our brush. Just add some thicker texture here to our water. Sound like Forrest Gump when I said that. I think that looks cool. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to dip right into my orange. I still have red on there, but that's okay. Because we can let that red and orange blend a little bit. So it might blend a little. I'm just going to kind of bring the orange over here. We've got some overlap. And then I'm going to make it thick again. So I'm going to keep working my way from right to left, and my next color is some yellow. I am going to rinse my brush just a tad because I have some red in it, and I don't want the yellow to turn all orange. I do want kind of a bright, pretty yellow. So I'm going to get most of that out of my brush, or you can switch brushes. The yellow is going to mix a bit with our orange, but I'd like to get kind of a true yellow over here. Kind of fill this in first. Now this is the real reason we needed the white because yellow over black isn't necessarily going to show up that great. So first I'm going to get this yellow in. We'll just kind of bring it across here. There we go. Now I'm going to let it cross over here, so I'm going to let this blend. It's going to kind of go back and forth here. We'll get a little bit of orange in there, a little bit of red. That's not too bad. It's a little bit darker than what I want, so I'm just going to dip in some white into spring. We'll see if I can lighten this up a little bit without turning it pink. It might turn pink on me. I think it's okay. I added a little bit of um, white over there because we have that white firework and I want a reflection of it. So I'm going to add just a touch of this white. Just so we can see a little bit of that white firework bursting here. Okay, then moving on over, um, rinsing my brush again because I got a bit of red on it. And I want to get kind of a lemony yellow over here to just brighten this up a tad. I'm going to need more white though because. My white has too many colors mixed in it because I was dipping for my fireworks. So I just want a true clean white here. If I can get my paint out. There, just need a jab. Just need a dot. If you're joining me, it's Rose from the Painted Toad and we are almost done painting fireworks at dusk. So this cool firework scene over the water with a cityscape in the background kind of a fun fun little painting here so i'm adding some white in here just to get a little bit of a lemony yellow trying to get some variation of color
Let's add in some thick spots of the yellow. Add a couple little thick spots of orange in here too. Gotta have my texture. Okay, almost all the way over. Now we're gonna get into some green. Almost done, almost done. So I'm gonna do green and white. I'm going to dip it both in the green and then get a tad of the white as well. Kind of put that over there so I have some white to work with. And I'm going to keep going. So I'm going to leave this kind of like this first. And then I'll go in there and get some more green so it doesn't look so minty. Just kind of getting an undercoat here. And then I'll let the green and the, oh, there we go. Let's just dip more green in there and then I'm going to bring that across. Just going back and forth on the edge of my brush. And then I'm going to let it crisscross here. So we'll get a little green and yellow mix. It's almost like the colors are blending on the water a bit. And almost done. Now we're going to come into some blue. I've got the real bright blue. I'll start with that with a little white. So blue and white. I'm going to bring this down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another blue that I have and just kind of have that light blue go into a darker blue. Almost to make an indigo, just like light would be. But we'll just crisscross this in here. Let's let these two blend a bit. And then let me add some of my signature texture. And then I'm going to grab a darker blue. Got this dark blue you can use ultramarine or whatever blue you have is fine. Let's make it darker than the one you got right here. And I'm gonna dip into this and let this kind of blend in with my light blue. So we'll get some color out here on the water. Some of that mixes a bit with the white, which is totally fine. I think I like it that way. Add some And last but not least is the purple. I'm not going to bother to wash my brush. I'm just going to bring some purple over here. And some of that can mix in with your blue. It'll look kind of cool. All right. So looking pretty good. Uh, the last finishing touch I'm going to do is I just want to add a bit of texture with the with some black um, just to get that dark water look that we've got over here a little bit. Um, so I'm going to take, I'm going to use my liner brush, I think, because I don't want 
super big plops of it. I want it to be more rippled. And I'm just going to see how this looks. I just kind of got to add. I'm going to make sure it's thick on here. Otherwise, I'm just going to get some black streaks. A little more black paint because my black paint's been sitting here since the beginning of the painting and it's already getting pretty thick and dry. So one more little plop should do it. And that is definitely painter terminology. A plop of paint. And I'm just very gently kind of adding Now, really, I don't even know if we need to really do this black part. I kind of like the way it looks without. So maybe if you're looking at it thinking, eh, I don't really like the black, you just leave it without the black. I'm already committed here, so I'm going to just do a little bit more. But I kind of like the way my colors are blending across here. So I'm not going to worry too much about doing black everywhere. Kind of committed over here, so I'm going to add a couple little. Seems to be a lot more black on this cool color side. So that's where I'm going to concentrate some of it. Just to get the different reflection effects in the water. Right. What do you think? Is it looking cool? Do you like it? Do you have fun with this one? Lots and lots of little brush strokes. I don't know if you can see the effect here. We've got like the color kind of coming from one side to the other. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit more over here in this part. All right, I'm going to leave it be. I can keep working and working and working at this, but I kind of like how it looks. I think it looks pretty cool, and I hope you like it too. So let me switch over here. Yeah, I think that looks cool like that. I like that.
We got a little bit. I almost feel like I could do a little bit more white right there. I don't know. What do you think? Maybe a little. Okay. Sorry. Just a little bit. I'm sorry. I thought I was done. But just a tad. Because when I look at it now, you know, I'm kind of, it's different when you focus looking above than looking straight at it. And I feel like this little bright area, we need just a tad more white in here. Just a little highlight. It's always good with your paintings to, you know, look at it from a distance or step away from it and come back to it and see if maybe there's something missing. So I just feel like we need a little bit more white here where this bright yellow one has got lots of white in there. So we're going to just, we're going to, I'm going to add just a little bit of a highlight in the water here to show that that area is slightly brighter than the other area. Let me see. A little right here too. Okay. Sorry. I can't help myself. I keep going and going and going. But anyways, my husband is probably ready to go for a walk. So I think I'm going to do our evening walk next. But if you stopped in, whoops, to say hi, thanks for watching. And I hope you're enjoying these little paint with me paintings. And if you missed any of them, they are all on my YouTube page. Look up the Painted Toad on YouTube. Um, or if you want to get the, um, the tracers and the supply list ahead of time to know what we're painting next, you can go to my website at www.paintedtoad.com and click on the Paint With Me page and you can enter your information. I'll email you something every week to tell you what we're painting and give you any tracers. This one didn't need a tracer, but occasionally I have a little tracer to help you out. So I hope you have a wonderful evening and um, I want to remind you to be creative, be artistic, and get connected at the Painted Toad. Have a great night. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome painting tutorials like this one.